Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh and you're here for Full Lid Friday. I'm excited. Um, some people were saying they wanted to meet Sam because he's always in here. He's either hanging out in the dog bed or Sam actually has his own recliner. I don't know if you can see that. He has his own chair. Sam, come see your chair. Come see your chair, buddy. You wanna come sing with daddy? Come here. Come here, come say hi. You wanna come say hi? Sam is 14. Hey Sam. Sam's 14. He's the king of the castle. He loves everybody. He's very much, very snuggly. He loves to snuggle. He's very, very affectionate. Can you say hi, Sam? You wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? Oh, that's nice of you to say and rub all your fur on my microphone. That's nice. So Sam has been around for a long time. He's been around since we had our Xena, our, our pit bull. She passed away a few years ago. And Sam is a little bit old. He's got diabetes, but he's a, he's a king. He's the man of the house. He gets all the special treatment. We have two other cats. One is Macaroni, one is Thug Life. And uh, Sam likes to go on my shoulder. Go up, go up. No, no. I love you, buddy. So that's Samson. He is named after Sam. Hey Sam, he always goes on the desk. No, 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 no. It's like any cat likes to completely break stuff on my desk and jump up and he eats margarine. Isn't that weird? He loves margarine. There's Sam's chair. Literally has his own recliner. That's how much I love that cat. All right, let's get to it. All right, it's contest time real quick. I got all your names in here. I thank you for reaching out to me again. If you, if I, cause I forgot to put them in the stinking circle of fun, whatever you call this thing. So thank you for resending me your name. I hope I got everybody I got 14 entries into this. So all you had to do was, you know, mention me in a post and go follow Dad Challenge podcast. He's fat and bald and ugly and you did it and it was awesome. So I hope your names are in here and they're all your Instagram names. So if you see your name pop up here and you win, you reach out to me and I'll send you a prize of the Lily Brush pack plus a couple of things. You know, I'm going to send you some more stuff than that. It's going to be a Dad Challenge unsolicited DCP. It's going to be exciting. Get ready for it. Here comes the spin. The bird's papaya. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you very much for joining this contest, everybody. The bird's papaya on Instagram. Reach out to me. Your prize is going to be on the way. I'm very lazy and slow. I'll get it to you as soon as possible, but please reach out to me. That's awesome. All right, so today we're going to talk about a cool thing that marked this desk that Sam just jumped on. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a video with Mark, but before we go there, if I get this in, I'm the best in the world. Damn, I'm terrible. One day I'll get it. I have gotten it before. You guys were watching Full Lid Friday a few weeks ago. Tom and I both, I went, I said, if I get this in, you give me all the money in your pocket. I got it in, and then he had to go, and if he got it in, he got all the money in my pocket. And then he got it in, which was, like, amazing. It was an amazing moment. Before I get started, there's a couple of updates for, like, family vloggers. I'm starting to cover every family vlogger, as you know. And one of those family vloggers is Brittany, I keep calling her Brittany, Brianna K. Okay, and I've been getting a lot of people message me in the back end about how she has like this YouTuber school or what, how to do what she does and she charges like a thousand dollars for this. And basically it's a private Facebook group where she gives people homework to do things and she charges them a thousand bucks. And it's insane. And the, I'm asking people, what advice has she given you? And I'm like, uh, what? I will give you the free advice. You don't need to go to her for a thousand dollar consultation fee. So one, one, not just one more thing that's pissing me off about family vloggers, and you'll see it through soon. We're having our MLM drop with Margaret. She's in the chat often. You'll talk to her. We're going to be uncovering MLMs together um, and how, we're, how they're tied together with uh, vlogger moms. Now, it, the reason I'm saying this is because it goes against everything a lot of people say. Is like, I just go to them for support and all this. Family vloggers could care less about you. And I've said this a million times. You are a paycheck to them. You are a customer. You're a consumer. Okay? And when they sell you the oils, when, they, when, you, they, when people advertise with them, it's not for you. It's for them. And this, this Brianna K doing this whole thing where she charges people a thousand bucks. And I don't know how many there are. There's probably a few hundred of these people that pay her thousands of dollars. So if you think of hundred people pay you a thousand dollars, it's a hundred thousand dollars. With the fan base, her size, it's really not that far fetched to find 100 people to pay you a thousand dollars. That's $100,000 in your pocket to do some Facebook homework and give access to private videos. 
anybody ever has any questions, and if I have time, I will answer your questions about YouTube. But that all being said, the initial start of being a YouTuber is getting the right equipment. And so Mark came in from You Build Creative. Head over and like him. Make sure you like him on his. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Mark is one of the Dad Challenge podcasts uh, hosts. Like he, he, we, we do stuff together all the time. He's been around. He's one of my closest buddies um, for a very long time. And he's got his own YouTube channel, which I help him. I've helped him build, and we do film. And he does lots of amazing stuff. He's a very talented custom home builder. We're currently, well, he is, I don't, I just film it. He's building a man bunkie, a custom tree house with like shiplap and like custom decor. It is amazing. And so we're waiting to drop that and hopefully we're going to help that go viral because we want Mark to grow his channel so he can do really cool stuff. Mark helped me build this YouTube desk. Well, he built it. I watched in awe. And so that video is here. It's not, it's not a DIY because it's just like a, Mark just put it together with his brain, but there's, it's very simple to follow what he's done. And I think he might do a DIY eventually, or I might do another video for him explaining exactly the process of what he's doing. But I want you guys to head over to that video after this video and go watch Mark's video. We want to get his numbers up just cause so he can get in the algorithm. Now, Mark used to post a lot. When I lived in Ottawa, we used to do tons of video, but since I've moved, we don't get to do a ton. So Mark's post is learning to post. He's learning to edit. He's learning to do a lot of stuff. And Mark is a super good guy. He loves you guys too. And you guys love him. So in order to support Mark, please go subscribe to his channel and watch this video of how this desk is made. Cause it's him and I having some fun and it's an amazing build. Like this desk is incredible. It's heavy as shit but it's incredible. And so if you wanna know how to be a YouTuber, the first step is get yourself a really, really good desk. And just so you know, my members and my Patreons, I'm, as soon as I clean the studio and I get a chance, I'm so busy, but as soon as I clean it and make it sweet, I'm 3D scanning my studio and I'm uploading it with custom video about how I do this um, and it's only gonna be for my members because I have to give my members something because they don't have anything. <laughs> they get early videos. And it sucks. I really want to give them something of value um, because, you know, a lot of people just support me monetarily through doing the Patreon or whatever, PayPal, all that stuff. And I really appreciate it, but I still want to give you some guys something awesome. So that's what's coming. So in that video, you're going to see this desk being built. And then in a 3D scan, we're going to show you some more video. I'm very excited about it. So that's what's coming up as far as that is. So make sure you go watch Mark's video. Oh, yeah. So that stuff coming up with the MLMs and all stuff. It's coming soon. I'm just waiting to download the video. My Internet's being a douche and that's probably going to come out like tomorrow. I don't know. But we're going to continue to cover the Weiss family, the Ace family, all the families. They're all coming out now. There's so many scandals, and it's just going to be... And you know what I'm finding is that those scandals might have been out there, but they've been forgotten. And so I'm going to actually cover the scandals and then talk about where they are now, what happened. Like Sam and Nia, a Christian couple who got pretty big, um, faked a pregnancy, faked a... Uh, um, a miscarriage for views and had to come out and apologize. And then now they're just like, they got kicked out of like YouTube conferences and all this crazy stuff. And they're kind of just still going. Same with, uh, a, there's a family in the UK. I keep forgetting the name. I want to say LeBrant, but it's not it. It's the Ingham family. The guy looks like he's, you know, emo from 1998 on MySpace. And he uh, solicited um, a 16 year old girl to go skinny dipping at Disneyland. And for some reason, people are just like, oh, well, you know, I want to rehash the scandals because they need to be rehashed. Like, there's not been any fixing. There's no problems been fixed. They just kind of, here's the problem with the world, is that when something new comes along, you forget about the old thing, which is why I'm not letting go of the Micah thing, because James Stoffer's still out here. Guys will call me a bully and whatever else, and people will say, oh, it's time to stop. It's never going to be time to stop until they're gone, okay? It's not going to be time to stop ever. Like, my mandate has become taking down family vloggers, and you know it, and if it's if that's not what you're here for, then I, 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 I can't blame you. I don't, you know, that's maybe not your bag, but... This channel is growing because of that specific mandate and it is working. And so we're going to continue to do it. So that's what's happening here. Oh, I got the ball back because I'm magic. Okay, if I get this in, when I come down to, let's say, Nashville, I'm going to take someone out for lunch. <sighs> Sucks to be you. You have to take me out for lunch. Don't forget, guys, I'm coming down to the United States, hopefully in a week, if COVID doesn't destroy everything. Um, about a week after my, my birthday's on Monday, so I'm coming down the week after. And I, the reason I'm coming down in December is because my work slows down here at home and gives me a chance. Two weeks quarantine won't matter because no one's doing any listings for real. So I'm very excited about that. I'm going to show you guys my route very soon because I have to do a charging route because I drive a Tesla. Hey, Tom, do you know I drive a Tesla? Just so if you didn't know. I drive Tesla. And so I'm going to show you guys my charging route. And if it happens to be a place where I'm going to be and you guys want to come meet for lunch or hang out, take a selfie with me or play guitar while we charge the car, I'm happy to hang out with anybody. Um, six feet, masks on, socially distanced, no hugs. I'm sorry. When the COVID is over, we will do real hugs, but I can't do hugs. My wife already doesn't really want me traveling, but I've got an interview with a author from the book, The Devil in Pew Number 7. And I'm really excited about that because it's one of my favorite books. 
And if you haven't read it, go read it. And I'm heading down to, to meet with Tiffany and we're gonna do launch something very cool. I'm waiting to launch it before I talk about it because it's gonna be awesome. And I'm heading to Syracuse to do some work. So I'm going down because work, I need to work, right? Christmas is coming, Christmas is expensive, school's expensive, and I need to be working and I'm always working. So that's what I'm doing and I'm very excited about it. California, I wrote California. Why did I write California? Oh, I just wanna say one thing. You guys had Thanksgiving yesterday and happy Thanksgiving and, but this whole thing with California and Gavin Newsom has me pissed. Cause you guys know, you know, the one thing I hate more than family vloggers is hypocrites, which you know, family vloggers tend to go hand in hand with being a hypocrite. But I hate Gavin Newsom. And I don't, I think, you know, Democrats and Republicans, this is not a, this is not a one-sided thing. They both hate Gavin Newsom. Here's why people hate Gavin Newsom. Cause he's a douchebag. And he's an elite politician like any other politician. There's no such thing as great, good politicians anymore, okay? So basically, he tells everybody, nobody can gather more than 10 people for Thanksgiving. You know, wear your mask, take a bite, wear a mask, take a bite. He's got all these things in place. But then he goes out and eats at this place called French Laundry or something. That's like, I think it costs $25,000 for him and his friends to go eat there. So not only is it super elite, he didn't pay for it. The lobbyists who took him out paid for it. And he was there unmasked shoulder to shoulder with everybody and then but tells everybody else you can't enjoy Thanksgiving you can't do all these things because COVID but then he goes and does the opposite and there's no ramifications literally he just oh I'm sorry he just says I'm sorry should have done it should have left but he's it, it was his birthday they planned it and he it was all premeditated it wasn't that he would just whoops I fell into French laundry and ate this $25,000 dinner my bad it was an accident same with Nancy Pelosi walking and getting her hair done look guys you can't th this is the reason why everybody's upset politicians not like you're listening because you're not, but stop being assholes. Stop. I don't understand. You're, you're a public figure. You don't think you're going to get caught by doing the thing? I don't. They're so tone deaf. It's insane to me. Nancy Pelosi, same thing. When she got during COVID, people are, don't have jobs or losing their jobs or losing their, their whole livelihoods because they're closing down everything. And that's not their fault. But at the same time, she's sitting there in front of her $40,000 freezer with her $18 ice cream or their custom ice cream and saying, look at me. I don't understand your politicians and ours are just as bad. So that's politics for today. I'm just saying everybody hates Gavin Newsom. He's a dingbat. This guy put these Christmas decorations up. He's an asshole. And I, I don't think this is over. Um, I'm projecting he's going he's gonna to have to step down. He's going to have to resign because this is a little bit crazy, especially during this, this re-rise of COVID. And that, that's a good segue into COVID because COVID is popping here, like exploding higher numbers than before the first rise. Okay, so here's my question again, everybody. That first rise that hit when we were trying to, to, to flatten the curve for hospitals, nobody was masked, nobody was. Okay, so it rose and I get it. And they were like, well, it rose because no one's wearing masks. Now we're higher than that before. And most people are wearing masks in public. Okay, now, and everybody's like, well, it's because they're gathering, maybe, but they're still wearing them in public. So. If there's no mitigation whatsoever by these masks, where's the science on this? This is bothering me because the masks aren't to protect yourself. They protect everybody else. So if you're out in public and everybody's wearing a mask, like if I brought a camera with me out in public and maybe I will to show you guys every single person that I've ever seen. And I went to the mall yesterday is wearing a mask. Every single and kids, everybody, everybody is. And so if that mask isn't letting the spit to get out or whatever. I get it, it might be on your hands, whatever, and it might be spreading, but it's spreading more than it was before masks. And so I'm just, I'm trying to say, that shouldn't be a thing, right? Because if everybody is masked and they are here, we are seeing higher levels than before masks. I just don't know the science of it. It's really bothering me because it, it, it frustrates a lot of people because they're like, why are we being forced to do this? And it's not doing a thing. Now people are starting to say, oh, I'm, I'm kind of over it. And they're becoming, I'm done with this. You know what? People who, 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 who could die from this, you need to stay inside. We need to help them. We need to give them the money to live and support them in every way we possibly can till we can mitigate this. But those who are healthy enough to get it in the 99.9% uh, you know, uh, recovery rate, you got to let people start getting it. That's, I mean, that's the only way to do this. because, uh, I, And I'm seeing that more and more people are becoming anti-vax, which is mind-blowing. And, and a higher number, a high percentage of people are not going to get this vaccination when it comes out. And so that's not going to help anybody. And so we're all stuck in this damn limbo where nobody's going to get the vaccination and people are like, well, the masks don't work and then blah, blah, blah. And the mask don't, I don't see the mask working at all. Again, I think the mandate needs to be, if it's going to be locked down, it's got to be locked down. And that's everybody's going, oh no, don't ever lock down. Although the lockdown is probably the only thing that will really work to flatten a curve, like a true lockdown, which is what Gavin Newsom did in California. And then people hate him because he did it. But then he went out. Look, if Gavin Newsom didn't go to French Laundry eat twenty five thousand dollar dinner, it might have been accepted. It might have been a little bit more accepted, right? The issue is that this effing hypocrite did it. And now he made it worse. 
by telling everybody, you know, do as I say, not as I do. And, every, and that pisses everybody off. So here, the issue is lockdown is the only thing that's going to flatten the curve. You have to stay home. You, you're going to have to shut the stores down. You know what? Someone made a, a, a suggestion. Why don't you open the mom and pop stores, the little shops, okay? Close down all the big boxes. I don't know everybody's like, what about everybody's jobs? They hire more people. But I mean, maybe this round for a couple of months, shut down the big box stores because they're the ones allowing everybody in. The little mom and pop stores, they still only have two or three people in at a time. The lineups are out the door. They're not spreading in those little stores. Plus it helps local. It supports local. These big giant box stores, they can still pay everybody for a few months, right? Shut down and they'll be fine. They're worth billions and billions of dollars. Mom and pop stores are not. Anyway, that's a suggestion I know that's pie in the sky. It's a little bit socialist, but... Just saying the only thing that's going to really mitigate this is really locking down or mandate N95 or the masks that actually do something, not the shitty fabric that I wear or whatever, right? These things don't work. These masks you get at like, at like Old Navy, they do nothing. They do nothing. Sorry. The masks are doing nothing. KN95 masks, N95 style, 3M masks, those do something. And unless we mandate it properly, plus, did you know my wife's in, in nursing school? She has to take an entire course on how to don and doff a mask, Okay. The regular humans, we're all stupid. We don't know it. If a, if a nursing school, if you're if training to be a nurse, you have to take an entire course on how to do it. We're not getting educated properly on how to do it either. They're just they're just throwing shit and see what sticks. That's all they're doing. They're trying to do things to politicians are trying to do things to sit, to look. We're doing something, but there's nothing you can do here. What you can do is get a vaccination in place, and you can mandate the right type of equipment out in the public, because masks are doing shit. I know people are going to be yelling at me for that, but I don't care. That's my take on it. Anyway, let's get on to, uh, well, MLMs. I already talked about that. We're going to be covering that soon with Margaret. That's going to be crazy. If you have stories, please reach out to me. FedEx update. Everybody's been like, what happened with the FedEx thing with Tiffany? I'll tell you what happened with the FedEx thing with Tiffany. So, and this is going to be a lesson for everybody and people in customer service at FedEx, if you're listening. The issue is when you send food to the U.S., you have to have this form. It's basically... A form that you, I had to pay $20 American for it, which is $27 Canadian for me, okay? And basically, I write on the form what is what food items are in this package, how they're packaged, what where they were manufactured. I had to Google where um, Nestle makes their chocolate bars in Toronto and put that address on there, what they're packaged in, like the type of packaging around it, which is like the cellophane wrapper. Um, I had to, all this stuff, the address of all the things. It was crazy. It cost me 28 bucks to fill out this form. I put everything on that form. I sent that to FedEx. They released it within an hour. And all I did was ask, and the thing that pissed me off the most was that she just sent me to this link for the FDA that literally you need to be a genius to understand. You have to go to Harvard Law School to understand what this thing said. It wasn't just like, here's how you do it. All you have to do, FedEx, listen to me. Okay, ready? I don't know why they want to make this thing so complicated. Provide the link for the place that I went for this form. I forget the name of it. I'm sorry, guys, but it's basically a form you fill out. It's a pre, it's just telling people that's coming in to you when it gets there. This is what's in the box. That's all it's all they have to do is provide the link to the place in, in FedEx. You can charge people for this if you want yourself. You can make your own site for it, but it's just a form that you fill out and they send you to the FDA, which doesn't give you anything They give you a million links. There's no step by step instructions. Nothing. It made it made me frustrated. It makes tons of people frustrated who are. Look, I'm pretty tech savvy and pretty Internet savvy, savvy when it comes to things like that. And I can't imagine someone who's not. They would be having a meltdown and a breakdown. And then I said, well, what does it cost to remove some stuff? Well, it takes seven days to remove stuff out of the box and blah, blah, blah. When all I really had to do was fill this form out and send it in, it was released within an hour. And FedEx refuses to help people and just make their life easier too. All FedEx has to do is be like, oh, it's so easy, honey. Like, remember Shelly? We talked to Shelly. She's too good for FedEx. All we have to do is be like, here's the link. Just fill this out and tell exactly what packages. It's so simple. I cannot believe it's this crazy. So it all got solved. Tiffany has her phone. Tiffany has her mittens. I got her. She got all the chocolate bars. Nothing was eaten. I gave her a little card in there. And so Tiffany, that was for you. Uh, thanks for bearing with us. Tiffany was super mad at me because I was like, I'm, I, I told her I was going to move mountains to get this package to her. I was upset with, with FedEx. And I was like, and she just doesn't like confrontation. And my wife's very similar to Tiffany. She, my wife would not be on the phone with FedEx like I was. People get anxiety for those types of conversations. I love it. Bring it. I love it. And I, you guys got to go live with me in that FedEx video where I got ghosted by Karen from FedEx. It was such a good video. I, I was having fun with it. And at the same time, yes, I was frustrated, but it did get solved. Thank you for your support. People who work at FedEx, um, tend to be half and half awesome and half a bunch of ding dingleberry assholes, which is really weird because you don't have to be that person. You can actually be a nice person and work at FedEx. So it gives FedEx a bad name when you have people like this throwing up roadblocks for no reason whatsoever. So 
tip, if you're gonna mail to the US anything, just fill out this form before you mail it and make sure that it, it's, it, it, they file electronically. So it just goes to the, to the it goes into a, a cloud somewhere and then they access it through your tracking number. So they, as soon as it gets to FedEx, if they pull the box off, they put the tracking number, oh, he filled out the form, good to go, boom, sends off. That's how it works, very easy. FedEx could have just said that and saved a whole lot of shit. And now I've got people reaching out to me with their FedEx stories. I've got one that's insane with a girl and she's gonna come on and tell her story, her and her husband, about um, the, I don't really want to give too much away, but it's a really, really sad story about a casket for a baby and how FedEx shit the bed on that. So that's coming and people are telling me their FedEx stories and it's crazy. And so I'm gonna do that because I think it's, there's gotta be justice for people because FedEx doesn't get, all these places get away with it because they're monopolies basically. They don't care. They really don't care about you. And so one way to do it is to express these stories so people can know that they're douchebags. And then maybe FedEx can change some of their policies. I don't know. I always think big like that, like YouTube changing their their policies for kids on their platform and all this stuff. And I think big, and I know that, you know, I'm a realist, unless something, you know, unless we hear the right person hears these types of things, it won't go, but you never know, right? You never know the right person might hear it. Oh, another COVID update. There's a guy in Toronto has a barbecue place who was like defying the orders. I don't know if you heard this on Twitter. It was like, he was going nuts. He's like, I'm open for business. I'm not shutting down. And you kind of like low key want to be like, don't be an a-hole. But at the same time, I kind of get it because nothing's really working. And so sh shutting down people and having people lose their businesses without giving them any respite is not smart either. And this guy gets arrested. The cops show up to his opening. He gets arrested. He has started a movement in Toronto and it's get, like there was marches and everything based on one guy's movement. So it makes me kind of like think, hey, it only takes one conversation or one story or one person to do something to, to ignite something that starts. Like this whole idea that maybe we could lobby YouTube to make sure you can't monetize kids under a certain age or under consent in your state or something like that, right? It makes me believe that, you know, one story or one guy ignites or one person ignites this conversation that starts a movement. I don't know. I'd like it to be me, but I don't care if it's not. I just want it to happen. Let's do some Reddit stuff because Reddit's fun, right? It's fun. Ooh, I don't know. This one. Let's see. Let's read it. Am I the asshole for arguing with my fiance after she read my late fiance's diary? Ooh, let's see here. My, male 34, late fiance passed away from a brain tumor three years ago. I had known her most of my life. We grew up together and were engaged for two years. We wanted to get married sooner, but she got sick and never recovered after that, despite doing all we could to fight this god-awful disease. My late fiance had a diary that I gifted her right after she was diagnosed. She was a type that would get very emotional and would have difficulty expressing her feelings and opening up about her issues. She was very thankful I bought her the diary and she told me I was the only one who really understood what she needed and how she felt. I'd see her spending a lot of time writing in her diary, whether at the hospital or at home. I never read it while she was alive, but she let me have it a week before she passed away. Whew. I had a hard time looking at it, and I, left, and I left it untouched for over a year after her death. That's when I started reading it. I brought it up in therapy, and it helped me tremendously. I don't have much of her stuff, but I still have her diary with me. I'm now engaged to my fiancé, who I met via mutual friend, and she was wonderful when I met her. Was, is the word here. <laughs> my current fiancé and I are open to each other. We talk about what bothers us all the time, but at the same time, there are things I'd rather not share or talk about. Eh. I'm getting better at communicating, but I'm taking my time. Okay, so he's not ready, but he's getting there. My current fiancé knows about my late fiancé's diary. Despite her asking to see it, and I have no idea why, she'd want to, but I made it clear that I have no intentions on sharing what's in it with her. It's not like it's a secret, but I know my late fiancé would want me to keep that secret. Right? My fiance kept bringing it up, knowing how uncomfortable that made me feel. And yesterday, I got home and found out that she took the diary and read it. Woo! I was absolutely pissed she didn't even deny it. Even tried to argue with me about why I was lashing out at her, even though she disrespected my boundaries. She even refused to acknowledge that couples should have personal boundaries. I yelled at her for being so inconsiderate and for touching the diary in the first place. She got upset that I reacted like this and refused to talk to me for hours. Oh, really? She's currently staying at her friend's house, saying that I was being harsh to her. She's the asshole. I'm sorry. Nope. Nope. I know that people are gonna say well, there's no boundaries This is a little bit different. It's not like you're cheating on her or keeping something like you know That's happening. This is something from your past. You don't have to show her especially if you're not ready and it's not even her business That's that, that's his dead fiance's business and that to me screams Run away as fast as you can from this girl She's not willing to respect your boundaries and then when you get angry at her first after saying no You're not allowed to read it, and then she reads it and she gets mad at you run so far away Look, I'm starting to do these things called Lessons with Dad on YouTube, where I'm changing a tire, giving you advice. And I know there's a fan out there, DeAndre, listen to me, bro. If you encounter a woman like this, 
and she's not willing to respect your boundaries or anything like that, it's time for a hard conversation. Run for the hills from someone like this that you can't trust, okay? Uh, if there's a girl in your life and you love her and all that stuff, that's fine, but make sure you're you're, if she's not comfortable with you not being able to express everything, because humans are different, right? You got to find someone you're compatible with. This person is not compatible with this person. That is that is crazy what she's done. So DeAndre, hear me out, bro. Be very careful who you give your heart to. <laughs> and make sure you're compatible before you get into a, 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 a committed relationship like this. Lessons from dads to dudes, all right? So a lot of people are saying not the asshole. She just, yeah, so not, she disrespected and violated your boundaries. And personally for me, this would be a near breakup. Yeah, I'd be, this is done. This is breakup central for me. You're done. Sorry. And then turned it around on me and blamed me for it. You're out. Bye. The ship is sailing. Maybe that's going a little far. Maybe it's time to get some counseling, some therapy to talk about boundaries and all this stuff. Because clearly this guy is, this has affected him really, really crazily. Obviously it would affect anybody. And his fiance just, I don't know what she, what she wants to know here, but... To me, that's a really big violation of privacy, first of all, because is that basically that girl has nothing to do with the current relationship, unless that guy is always talking about maybe how he misses her, all that stuff, you know, can be that type of thing, but I don't think so. I think this girl's just nosy AF. Here's one that's highlighted. The behavior of uh, OP's fiance is highly concerning. Abusive people tend to test the waters by manipulation like this. Asking their partner to throw away things they love, quit activities they enjoy, or force the victim to share information, it's a huge red flag. This is huge. DeAndre, listening, look. If you're in a relationship with a person and they're telling you to not hang out with certain friends, to not do certain things, to not enjoy certain things that you used to love, and they want you to change for the worse, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's like you can enjoy new things with people that you meet, right? And you can be like, oh, I really, you know, I didn't, I didn't like pickleball before, but now I love pickleball because I, I picked it up with this person that I enjoy. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with adding new things. But if that person is saying, you know, I want you to make sure you don't, I don't want you hanging with that guy anymore because I don't like him for whatever reason, right? Or, you know, or I don't want you, I don't, why do you collect toys? Because I collect Transformers and stupid shit behind me and people make fun of me. Um, why do you do that? And they like, they, they don't, you know, at first you start seeing these little inklings. If this starts happening, then confide in someone you trust, like your mom or a good friend and say, you know, what do you think of this? And then make sure that you're reaching out and saying, look, these are the things that I love and I've always loved. And there's nothing wrong with doing things that you love, right? Everybody do the things that you love as long as they don't hurt other people around you. Right. But sometimes you come in and you do have a toxic relationship or you do have some, maybe she doesn't like you drinking the way you do because of the way you act or drugs or whatever it is. Maybe they don't like that about you. That's different. You could take a personal reflection on that and say, ah, you're right. When I'm drunk, I'm a dink. So maybe I should stop that because it makes her uncomfortable. That's a little bit different. When it's a behavior that affects the other person in a negative way, then you can look at it. But if it's a behavior like something you love, like gaming, unless it like becomes the only thing you do, because that could be a relationship deal breaker for a lot of women too. If you game more than you spend time with your girlfriend or wife, then you can get some shit. So it's nuanced, but at the same time, if it's things that you love and enjoy that don't hurt anybody that necessarily don't have a neg negative ramification for what's for whatever reason and they're telling you to remove it, that's dangerous, okay? Abusive women are often a lot better at manipulation than abusive men. Mm. I hope OP takes the time to read up on the real boat rockers as well as the mental and emotional abuse. Just make sure emotional, just, just to make sure. Emotional immaturity in adults leads to all sorts of abuse. Thankfully, such people are easy to recognize and we know what to look for. Very smart. Very smart comment from the matriarchy. Great comment. Most people are saying she's the a-hole. A lot of people are like, what was she gonna glean from this? This breach of trust, what, what could she, what was her end game? What was she hoping to achieve by, by violating this guy's privacy to that level, right? Very, very much not the asshole. This guy is not the asshole. And dude, if you're listening and you're not, <laughs> you need to uh, get out of that relationship. That is not cool. How about some would you rathers, everybody? Also, everybody give a shout out to DeAndre in the comments. He's like a young fan who watches all my videos He's mature, apparently, as mom Lucy has said. He's mature. Shout him out right here in the chat. DeAndre, they're all going to say hi to you. And uh, he's a cool kid. And uh, good for you, buddy, for, for expanding your horizons. Let's do some would you rathers. Which age would you rather be forever? Oh, this is going to be a good one. Six, 16, 26, 36, 46. Skrillex epic light show in a nightclub. <laughs> I'm going to, you know what? This is a hard one. 26 for me was not good. I was poor. I was broke. This is going to be nuanced for everybody in, what, in what's walk of life. I feel like if you grew up privileged and had a lot of money and got to go to school and didn't have debt and all that stuff, younger would be better. But as I got older, I started understanding, you know, the value of money and learning how to treat money and all because I was I grew up poor. No one ever taught me how to use money. Now that I'm a little bit, you know, middle class and I can buy guacamole if I want to, I kind of like where I am right now. I'm going to say 36 because I've matured enough to not be a complete young asshole, but at the same time, I'm still youthful enough to do some cool shit, like not break my back, 
playing basketball. So I'm going to go 36. And the answer is 26 overwhelmingly, 2.8 thousand compared to everybody else because that's after college, you're in a career, you might still be dating, you might be doing that scene, you might be having some fun, 26, I get it. But I'm going 36 because 26, I was a loser. Okay, here's a fun one. Would you rather have one of these choices of a superpower, but each comes at a limit or be filthy rich? Okay, so here, would you rather have invisibility, but you stay invisible for one year every time you use it? <laughs> that would suck. I mean, you could get, I mean, you could probably mitigate it, but invisibility is like a superpower. You can think about the things you could do if you're invisible, right? You can rob banks, you could steal, nothing good you can do invisible. Like you're going to be breaking the law to make money. So it's not a good thing, but you could do some cool stuff. Flying, but it takes a lot of physical and mental energy. So you're only able to do it one hour a day. Whew. That's a good one. Super strength, but you can no longer touch anything fragile. Even a handshake to someone would break their arm. And no, you cannot control it. Like example, your steering wheel in your car would have to be tungsten steel to withhold your strength. Water's your weakness because you drown because you're so heavy. That's crazy. Healing. You can heal anything and anyone, but you're only limited to five people, animals a month. Takes a lot of energy from you. Wow. Telekinesis, psychic powers. You can move things with your mind and you're also able to read minds. But you get a massive headache if you use it longer than an hour. And sometimes when you get tired, you cannot turn off the mind reading. So everyone is loud for hours until you can regain strength to both physically and turn it off mentally. Holy. Sounds like being a parent of kids anyway. $100 trillion. You're the richest person on earth and you can do whatever you want with that money. Sam, what do you want, buddy? What are you going to choose? I mean, not invisibility because not for a year. No, that's going to be crazy. Like, what if you want to do it and stuff? That's going to be, I don't know, it could be kinky for some people. Flying is one of the big ones. If I could fly for one hour a day, yeah, that would be amazing, but there's not how far can you get in an hour? How fast can you fly? Like, can I fly over to the UK and drop off some Canadian treats for my UK people or my Australian people in an hour? Then yes, I would probably choose that because flying would be amazing. But one hour a day, what if you go somewhere an hour and you're like, ah, oh, I'm too tired and you have to walk back? No thanks. So I'm probably going to choose, well, even the healing one is amazing because you can heal five people. You know, a lot of, a lot of really nice people will choose the healing, right? They're going to choose healing because you can feel, heal five people a month or animals a month. Although here's the thing, if that ever got out to the public and you can only do five at a time, you'd likely be targeted and you'd be captured by the government and stuff like that because you'd be healing like, you know, you can make a lot of money doing the healing. You can make way more than $100 trillion by healing. So the, the $100 trillion is out because you can do, you can make $100 trillion by these other things. Telekinesis, psychic powers, you can read minds and move stuff. Yeah, but then you have to listen to people read, read your wife's mind after she asks you what, what questions and stuff. <laughs> I'm going with, dudes, I'm going with flying. Oh, by far and away, $100 trillion. These people are closed-minded. All right. Now we're on to my favorite part of Full Lid Fridays. Unboxing. Oh, it's from Caspar. Caspar in the comments, say hi. You can always f flash more bling than Micah. Happy birthday, Caspar from Casper. I'm not going to say her real name. Those are nice. Are they earrings or rings? Oh, these are rings. Let's try them on. Oh, they're nice. Look at these rings, yo. That's your starter ring for mommy vlogging. These are ones you just get for pushing out babies out of your midsection. These are nice, nice rings. These are definitely not gonna fit anything because I'm fat, but that is nice. Casper, I do. That's a nice starter mommy vlog ring. It's not this one, but it's okay. See, this is like, you know, the starter ring after 100,000 subs, then when you, you know, you adopt a kid from China and you make a million dollars, this is the one you get after because you don't want to pay for the good therapy, but you get this one later. This is like the top ring. This is like, this is eighth family. That's what you get when you have like 17 million subs. Very nice, Casper. Those are amazing. I'm going to wear those and see what my wife says. I'm going to just wear that upstairs and be like, hey, what do you think? Where is this focus on this thing? It's nice. Look at it. It's gleamy. I like it. It's going to wear it at work today. What's this one? Oh, magnetic eyeline and eyelash kit. Oh yeah, is there a note in there? There's no note. Who sent this to me? Amazing. I don't know how that works, but I think it's like this stuff you put on your eyelashes and then it's, me it's metal and then they stick to it. So those are gonna come in handy. For show, for show. Look at that, looks nice. I can't believe you got the right one, Casper. It fits perfectly. Isn't that nice? 
All right, got a big one here. Let's open it. Where's my knife? Kniff. Oh, don't cut. Going to a doctor to get that done anyway. Might as well just do it here. Dun dun dun. Oh. Okay. Oh, here's a note here. A gift for you. Happy birthday, Josh. I wish you could get the real deal, but this will have to be a temporary one for now. Have the best birthday. Wishing you and your family all the best from Christine Roadhouse. Thank you, Christine. Well, let's see what it is. I hope it's candy. <gasps> what? What? You have no idea how happy I'm about to be right now. She got me the Sword of Omen. If you don't know what the Sword of Omen is, it is the Thundercats. When I was growing up, okay, the one thing I loved more than anything was the Thundercats. Not only was the animation better than everybody else's animation, but it was the Thundercats and he had a sword of omen. And he would pick up the sword and he would put his eyes like this. And it would be like, it would turn into a big sword and they would fight. Oops, jeez. So I said, if I ever get the sword of omen, look, look at the power I have right now with the rings, the sword of omen, the haunted wooden spoon. Like, I'm protected here, everybody. Thank you, Christine, for the Sword of Omen. This is amazing. Amazing. Incredible. You guys are so nice to me, and thank you so much. Make sure you send me your address if you've sent me something, so I can send you a gift, because that's how this works. I'd love to send you a gift for sending me a gift, because that is very generous of you. And again, not lost on me how privileged I am to do this, and that you guys send me gifts like this. Incredible. That sword is amazing. Like, I can't even get over it. You know what? Weston's going to want to play with this, but I'm going to have to be like, nope. This is daddy's. One more unboxing. I got an email today from somebody I'm doing something with. Sounds bad. <laughs> a project we're working on together. And her name is Hanji Chang. And she's got this, she's an amazing animator. Like, you remember the old school way of animating, like, uh, the, uh, South Park Made Famous? Anyway, she's very, very good at it. And she told me to unbox this on camera for you guys. And so she sent me a, a, a picture, which, guys... Any day of the week, if you're going to send me something, if it's homemade, I'm going to love it. I'm going to love anything you send me, obviously, and I'm be very grateful for you sending me things, and I really, really appreciate everything, like the sword and the spoon and the, the rings and the aprons and the cool stuff. This stuff is all really amazing. Like, I love the stuff that is, like, memories, that's jokes. That stuff is awesome. But if you homemade me, home make me something, I'm, like, it's awesome. So... So here it is. This is a picture of me that she's created. This is her gift to me for my birthday, and I love it. Her and I have decided to launch a YouTube channel for kids where we're going to create kids songs and kids animations and like lessons and fun stuff for kids and just have some fun. And Everly has sung a song and you guys have heard it at one of my firesides called Pack Your Bags and she animated it. And I wish I could show it to you right now, but we're waiting until it's like done. Oh, I wish she could show it to you right now, but it's so good and it's just very cute and it's going to be such a good place for kids to come. It's like the dad challenge for kids and uh, she's very, very talented at what she does. And so we're very excited about this. It's, it's, it's definitely huge time consuming. Assuming, but when it comes out, I want you guys all to go subscribe to that channel. Make sure your kids are watching it because it's for kids, okay? And it's going to be fun. We'll have some really great games and fun prizes and that kind of stuff. And we're going to animate songs, some really fun stuff. And so, Angie, thank you so much for this picture. It's actually hilarious. Some Instagram, you guys go take a look. Make sure you follow her and go look at her animations on YouTube. I'll link her below. So thanks so much, Angie. I appreciate it. I didn't get one when I was a kid because I didn't really get any nice toys because we didn't have a ton of money. So... Um, getting this is actually super nostalgic for me, not gonna lie. I'm, I'm like, it's hitting me pretty hard. Nostalgia is hitting me really hard right now. You know, my mom used to feed us puffed wheat because we didn't have a ton of money. We you get those big, giant, like, horse feed bags of puffed wheat, and we eat puffed wheat with, like, brown sugar on it and watch cartoons. Voltron, Thundercats, He-Man, G.I. Joe. It was like, you don't forget it. I, our kids don't have that anymore. They have everything at their fingertips in an instant anytime they want and they're very privileged but when we were kids we had to watch commercials and shit so, <laughs> thank you so much for that guys that's an amazing thing you've done for me i appreciate it so there it is full lid friday that's the lid and uh you guys have all the updates you have everything going make sure you head over to mark's video and watch that right after this video i'll give you the link in the chat below um and uh you know support mark mark is one of the dad challenge dudes okay he's a dcd and he is I, his work is my work. I do his work for him. I do all the filming, a lot of it, and uh, we've been building his channel for years, and we want to get that thing going. I would love to see Mark fulfill his dream of like traveling all over the world with his own like, YouTube show, building things for people. Like if you got a cool building project that you want to pay for, and he'll come build it, we'll, we want to go out on the road eventually and do this type of thing. We've got an idea. 
And uh, I'm really excited about that idea. I always have ideas. The issue is, 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 is getting those ideas and getting them out. So I've got this idea with Tiffany when I'm going to go see her in Georgia, hopefully, to execute that idea. And uh, I've got this other idea with another person with, with T-shirts and other designs. The person who made me the bag behind me, the, the, the Not My Jam bag and the Nita She's going to be helping me make shirts and stuff like that. So I'm very excited. There's a lot of people that are joining this the Dad Challenge team, and they're not doing it for free, everybody. Like, if you've got a really cool idea and you want to help me with it, and we can use this platform to grow something, I'm happy to, to, to talk to anybody. Again, if you need help with YouTube, don't go to Brianna K, guys. I'll give you the same advice for free if you need it. All that to say, follow me on Instagram, because I would love that. Because you know I'm growing my Instagram, right? Also... Make sure you uh, like and subscribe or don't. I don't care. Hit the little bell if you want to have a notification and stick around for tomorrow. We're going to be uncovering the more of the Weiss family shit that's going on because I dug into the analytics. I paid this the service where I could find the analytics and you guys are not going to be happy with what I found because I was like, yep, it's what I thought and it's going to be crazy. And now I'm going to dig into all the family vloggers analytics because if you know that what you're the person, if you know that you're targeting men between a certain age that shouldn't be watching the stuff about your kids. And you know that, that those are who are watching your videos. Are you going to put them out there? One of them, who said it yesterday? They said, they said, if you knew that a gross person was going to watch it, or would you film this thing with a 35-year-old disgusting guy watching you film that? Would you, would you be cool with that? Because that's who's watching it, right? So lots to do, lots of families to take down, lots of conversation to have. Uh, James Stoffer is a douchebag. Make sure you head over there and uh, tell him that. And uh, don't forget, everybody. You are valuable. You are loved by me, by others around you. And some people, you know, might not have as many people around them as others, but I just want to let you know for sure you've had an impact on someone's life and you might not even know it. So understand your value because you don't even know it yourself. You don't know the ripple effect you've had on somebody by a positive comment that you've made, made, made someday, a smile, some advice, a listening ear that you might have done at one time. So many people have different gifts. I have the gift of talking to your face until you laugh if you're feeling bad. I don't have the gift of listening. I'm terrible at it. But some people have the amazing gift of listening. Everybody has a gift and something valuable to bring to this human race, to this connection, to this conversation. And so you might not know it, but you definitely have major value. And so I will always say it. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Your value comes from who you are. So what did they say yesterday? The comment was, I think I took a screenshot of it. A Pandama 1666 writes, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. A Pandama 1666, wisdom bomb. Thank you so much for that. You guys have an amazing day and I'll see you tomorrow.